What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Luke Innes here. If you're wondering about the whole black and white thing by the way, it's because the lighting isn't very good for filming in this room at night. The black and white thing is quite an easy way to sort of get around that. Um, that's the reason that I've uh, started doing it when I'm filming at night and stuff. Um, if you look back on some of my older videos, the lighting is tragic if I'm trying to record at night. So, you know, this is... This is a, a bit of an easy out on that, that subject. Today I'm going to be talking about a uh, movie from uh, the late 2000s, I guess. Uh, a cricket-themed horror movie called I Know How Many Runs You Scored Last Summer. I've got to say, regarding that title, first of all, that's not a funny title, despite what they, uh, you know, they may think, the people who made this movie. They've just taken the title of any horror movie, any popular horror movie, and worked, um, you know, cricket into the fucking fold on it. They, you know, it, it's no, it's no better of a, a joke than calling the movie the last leg before wicket on the left. To be fair, you know. So the movie, as it is proudly displayed in the uh, closing credits, was written, directed, edited, and produced by Stacey Edmonds and Doug Turner, and it stars Jai Coutre, Stacey Edmonds, and as Jackson. So essentially this movie is about a child who is bullied by his cricket team in Australia, and uh, comes back to wreak bloody revenge against the former members of his cricket team. At the time of the movie starting, he's already killed five of them, uh, there's uh, another five who he wants to kill, um, and uh, the whole thing is under investigation and the link has been established and they're trying to track this guy down. Kim Reynolds, a detective from uh, Scotland Yard in England, arrives in Australia uh, to um, work on the case, what with the fact that there's recently been a string of killings in England with a similar MO. And all of the um, uh, remaining living members of the cricket team are moved to a safe house, um, all of them in one place. And that sounds like quite a stupid thing, but, um, you know, to put all of the targets in one place for the killer to come and find. But it becomes apparent, the, the movie does actually kind of justify that as it goes on, um, and I'll explain why a little bit later on. And, of course, one by one, uh, the... <laughs> The members of the team get killed uh, with various uh, cricket-related implements in uh, very bloody ways. Uh, they're killed with, you know, a cricket glove with knives attached to it and a cricket ball with uh, nails through it and uh, sharpened uh, wicket stumps and that sort of thing is what you're sort of looking at. So I've got to say, this movie is clearly really cheap. Um, but despite that it does have quite a nice visual style at no point does the kind of low budgetness uh, of the movie um, make it feel overly amateurish you know they, they, the, the movie is well shot I've, I've, I've got to say that it's well edited as well and, and, and in general from that point of view it, it is quite a good movie and it's nice to see a movie that uh, kind of has those things on its side as, as as benefits that they you know they 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 didn't cut any corners in terms of trying to get this movie made cheaply as possible in that regard it is a nicely put together movie and the acting's okay the acting's not terrible um which is sort of the standard you expect for this sort of thing but on the whole the acting's okay it's it's, it's fairly nicely done there's the odd moment where there's a there's a bit of a slip up but on the whole it is a fairly well acted movie Another great positive about the movie that I really enjoyed is the effects. Now, uh, oftentimes with movies like this, the temptation is to use really sort of crappy CGI for the kind of blood and gore effects, um, especially when, you know, they want to get something piercing through someone's body and they don't necessarily have the budget to do that practically. Um, for instance, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a scene where a guy um, gets um, the sharpened stumps put put through his body and they come out of his chest. But rather than having, you know, a crappy CGI effect where that looks terrible, what they've actually done is kind of hidden the initial impact, have the initial impact off camera, and then pan down and show these really nice practical kind of um, prosthetics with the, um, uh, the sharpened ends of these wickets coming through the, um, the chest. 
and that's really commendable because it's a nice way of doing it that works and is effective and doesn't look shit frankly so yeah big thumbs up for that to the filmmakers let's get on to the negatives now um okay so first of all the film is a little bit over long despite the fact that it's under 80 minutes long i think if you cut out all of the um kind of credits and stuff this movie is actually closer to 70 minutes um, and even then it feels a little bit long even at that which is a shame really because um, overall the film is quite well made and I think a bit more streamlining um, or possibly the inclusion of just a bit more story might uh, help um, make this movie a might more enjoyable another weird thing that happens is there's a scene where, um, what's the character's name? Kim Reynolds, um, played by uh, Stacey Edmonds, as I mentioned, who's kind of one of the major forces behind this movie. There's a scene where she has a shower, um, and it's a really long, pointless, nudie scene with a really obvious body double. In fact, let me look, see if I can find the name of the body double, because, um, yeah, Miss Ariana Starr. And they make quite a big deal about that, like like she's listed in the opening credits, and she's only a body double. And the reason for that is because she's obviously a reasonably famous model, it would appear. Um, it's quite funny, if you watch the end credits of the movie, you know, when it lists her as the, the uh, body double, and it lists off all of her sort of achievements in the modelling field underneath, which is really weird, actually, because, you know, when actors are credited in movies, you know, they don't then put, like, a list of all the other things they've done as well, you know? So that's really odd. I mean, the scene itself is just really awkward because it just kind of comes along and is a little bit too long. And you're looking, you know, she's got a nice body, admittedly, but it's just kind of this lingering, um, you know tits and bush shot that, that doesn't really add anything at all really um, so it's quite funny uh, in that regard I'm going to throw out a bit of a spoiler here well quite a major spoiler actually so skip to the on-screen time mark if you want to avoid it so you can experience the movie fresh it's actually not that big of a, um, a surprise when it does turn out uh, to happen but it turns out that uh, Kim Reynolds is the um, uh, Phil Phillips I think his name is the um, the, the killer's uh, sister and they are in an incestuous relationship and the reason that she is here is to gather all of these team members together to make it easier for him to kill them. Like I say on the whole it's not a massive surprise it's it's a little bit of a twist but you, you kind of get the sense that a twist was coming and that does explain the whole reason that there was um, you know cause for all of these guys to get gathered in one place so that they were easier to kill. And that does lead to quite a nice little ending actually where um, the guy who finds this out, uh, who's one of the cops who's involved, gets killed. And then another one of the cops arrives um, in kind of cricket gear <laughs> to take on this, the, the killer and uh, kill him. And he, he manages to, um, and then he sort of saves um, the uh, female sergeant. And um, just as the, the movie sort of ends and cuts to uh, black, I guess, uh, she's preparing to stab him with one of the uh, wickets. It's pretty. Um, it's a pretty funny ending, I've got to say, and it's quite a good ending to the movie overall. So in summary, this movie is decent. Let, let, let's call it decent. It was an enjoyable enough watch when it wasn't feeling bogged down. There's plenty to enjoy here. Like I say, on a visual level, the film's actually pretty strong. It could have done with the comedy element of the film being a bit stronger, and it would have probably gotten higher marks. But overall, I do think that I know how many runs she scored last summer, despite its stupid title, is definitely a film that I would suggest checking out. It's it's a halfway decent film. You might find that you really like it if you're into this sort of low-budget thing. Overall, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I feel like it was a enjoyable enough film. I certainly don't feel like I wasted my time watching it. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed this video, why not consider liking, commenting, subscribing. Go down into the description and check out my podcast. It's called Ironcast. It's all about music. I really hope you enjoy that. And if you feel like being extra awesome, why not order me something off of my Amazon wish list? I will definitely give you a shout out and I will certainly review it if you do order it for me. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you very soon.